Hello and welcome to our Maunday Thursday service and we commemorate the giving of the Holy Communion to us as a people and also the Christ's washing of the disciples feet and normally we would have a service in the Abbey and we'd be washing people's feet and uh, celebrating communion. Well this year we're going to be celebrating communion but when it comes to the washing of feet uh, I'm not going to be able to do that but maybe if you had a bowl and some uh, water you would be able to wash your hands which would be a reminder not just of Christ washing us and cleansing us but also our own weakness because whenever we wash our hands like that it's a reminder of Pilate and there but for the grace of God would go I. So let us begin with a moment of quiet. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all the hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you repeat after me the Kyrie, as the cry of the early church? Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God, who delights to forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you and life eternal. Amen. Now we have our readings, and thank you for everybody taking part. This chapter 12, verses 1 to 4 and 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbour, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Gospel reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17 and 31b to 35. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover feast. 
Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and he was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part in me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, don't just wash my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty Father, we ask that you would please in your great mercy, strengthen us in our walk in your way and conform our hearts to the likeness of Christ. Amen. Monday Thursday is one of those moments when we stop and reflect and remember. We remember that Christ gave us the Holy Communion as a place of meeting, a trysting, trysting place. And he also washed the disciples' feet and then went out and was betrayed. It's one of those moments which turns on the, the silence at the end of the service. And we move towards Good Friday. So first of all, the giving of the Holy Communion. And there has been so much written about 
the Holy Communion and the bread and the wine and what happens and everything else. But the honest truth is that it is not magic. There is an element of mystery in the invitation to come and meet Christ over bread and wine. And Cranmer put it so well when he said, feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. There are ways in which no wordage can actually fulfill what's going on and what's being, what's happening. And we need to embrace this as a means of grace. Somewhere we can go in all our weakness and frailty when things are up and down. We can go and we can meet Christ and be with him. I was very privileged earlier on in my ministry to um, be giving communion um, at the altar rail. And as I came to the altar rail, uh, there was somebody there who had been very depressed recently. It was Easter time. I gave the communion, uh, the bread, and as they took the bread, she, they described it as suddenly becoming aware of the presence of Christ, literally standing behind them, and that his hand was upon their head, and that they were healed. And I think we want to be open, not only to being strengthened by Christ and remembering his cross, but also to be filled with his presence, and that this is a healing presence, a transforming presence, that we must not miss out on all the wonders that pour from the cross down through time, through the bread and the wine, and into our hearts. The second thing is that if Christ said, do this in remembrance of me, he also said, you need to wash one another's feet even as I have washed yours. Jesus took the towel and it wrapped him around himself. This was the symbol of the lowest of the slaves. The one up used to unlatch the sandals, but the lowest slave took the towel and washed the people's feet who were coming to dinner or to the household. And Christ took this and he said, this is what discipleship looks like. If I've done it, you do it because you are following me. And this, of course, is not only an action on Monday, Thursday, but it's an attitude all the way through that while our call is to love God and to love others as ourselves, that others is putting others' interests forward as well as our own, as uh, it's translated in Philippians chapter 2. So we are called not to rise up and to trample on others, not to uh, rubbish one another in private and throw uh, people's reputations into the bin. But we're called to look for the best, to serve where we can, to be a blessing and to be Christ to others. This is not a high call. Do we not need a means of grace? And the last thing is to remember that it was after this extraordinary moment when Christ had given the communion, he'd washed the disciples' feet, the Judas had taken the bread, he had gone out and it was night, that they went up to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there Jesus, not wanting to die, but submitting himself to the Father's will, sweated blood, and he surrendered himself, not my will, but thy will. And we too, are called as we come into this deep and extraordinary moment to echo those words. Father, not my will, but thy will, in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and help us to walk the way of Christ and be his man or woman. Amen. This is the moment where we normally wash our, the, our feet, uh, but we're not going to do that. And 
uh, I'm going to pray a prayer and then wash my hands and I would invite you to do that and have a moment's silence before we uh, go into our prayers. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. So teach us, good Lord, to serve you, thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Amen. Father, on this the night that he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet, we commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and the unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us grace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse us with the body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your only Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end he turned. they turned on him. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine and he took the cup and gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in remembrance of me. So let us proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross upon which Jesus died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. So send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us celebrate the feast. For we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. So draw near with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ that was broken for us all, keep us in eternal life, and transform us into the likeness of Christ. The body of Christ be keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ that was shed for each one of us. Keep us in eternal life. May we be filled with the wine of the kingdom, the power of the Spirit, and be transformed. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. And Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently said, even though I must die with you, 
I will not deny you. All of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself upon the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again away he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands upon him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was in you, with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. They all deserted him and fled. <laughs> 